You probably recognize that tune as coming from O Come Emmanuel, which we have been singing here at St. Matthew's Church every Sunday in Advent as we prepare for the coming of Christ and the celebration of Christmas. Every Sunday morning, we read a passage from the Christmas story and light one of the candles on the Advent wreath. The hymn, O Come Emmanuel, is based on a prophecy that is central to our Advent celebrations, and that is the prophecy of the coming of Emmanuel, which means God with us. The prophecy is given to us in the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the 15th verse. This was a very bleak and difficult time for Israel. Uh, some years before Isaiah's time, uh, the country had been divided, the country we know today is Israel, had been divided into two countries. Israel to the north, sometimes called Ephraim, with ten tribes. Judah to the south, with two. Each had their own capital city, Samaria to the north, Jerusalem to the south, each with their own governance, and their religions were a little bit different from each other. They were two different countries. At the time of Isaiah, Ahaz was king of Judah, and the country was in severe crisis. The reason being is that there was a country to the east, Assyria, a pagan country, with a very big army, and they were intent on conquering the known world, and they were sweeping up everything and everybody in their path. They were threatening all the countries to the west of them, including Israel and Judah. In fact, Israel, the northern kingdom, would be decimated by the Assyrian invasion, and the ten tribes that lived in, in uh, Israel would be lost to history forever. And you may be familiar with the legends that surround the ten lost tribes of the northern kingdom. Judah, the southern kingdom, would also come under attack, but would be saved by the skin of their teeth and survive. Ahaz was king at the time. His solution, his plan to defend his country, was to enter into an alliance with a neighboring country. He had several possibilities and was pondering this question when God raised up a prophet who would give him a very different answer to his problem. That prophet was Isaiah. Isaiah told Ahaz not to trust political alliances. They would all fail him, but to trust in God. Now Ahaz was, as you can understand, skeptical about this advice. So Isaiah urges Ahaz to ask God for a sign to confirm to Ahaz uh, of God's trustworthiness. Ahaz initially refuses, but Isaiah keeps on urging him until he agrees, whereupon Isaiah gives him the sign. The sign is that a virgin or a young girl will give birth to a son and his name will be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That prophecy of Isaiah in the seventh chapter would be fulfilled with the birth of Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of Matthew in the first chapter. Once again, Israel was in a bleak and difficult time. She'd been under occupation for years, most recently by the Roman armies. At that time, a young girl, a virgin by the name of Mary, is pregnant. Her betrothed, Joseph, is not the father and he knows it. His plan is to put her away quietly, which is his right to do. Then Joseph has a dream, whereupon the angel of the Lord speaks to him, comes to him and says, don't put Mary away, for she's about to have a baby boy, <clears throat> and his name will be Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. And this will be a fulfillment of the ancient prophecy of Isaiah, that to a virgin would be born, a young boy, his name would be Emmanuel. I have to tell you that there's a lot of controversy about the translation of the Old Testament passage in Isaiah. The question is this, does the Hebrew word Alma mean virgin or simply a young girl who may or may not be a virgin? There's been many publications that have addressed this issue and much controversy has surrounded it in regard to biblical translations. I'll have more to say about that on Sunday and I hope you come to hear it. But suffice it to say this, that the real meaning of Christmas really is not about materialism, as we all know. It's not about 
spending lots of money on gifts, going to parties, running up our credit card bills and all the rest that seem to characterize the season. It is really a season of hope that in the midst of the darkness of our lives comes the hope that is given to us and a gift to us by God. That gift that is given to us is the birth of His Son, Jesus Christ, whose birthday we celebrate next Wednesday and, of course, the prior evening, Christmas Eve. Incidentally, our services will be at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening and on Wednesday at 9 a.m. We hope you come. And whatever may be happening in your life, sometimes our lives feel as though they become very dark or we're facing an array of enemies that seem to be much stronger than ourselves or we are in a tight spot. These are all the things that um, the Israelites felt at different times in their history. But God gave them a sign. He said, trust in me, and the sign will be the birth of his child. That's what we celebrate in Christmas. And we hope and pray that you put your trust in the Lord. And remember that no matter what your circumstances may be, the Lord, God Almighty, will be faithful to help you through them. On behalf of our entire parish family here at St. Matthew's Church, we wish you and those you love a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching.